guys! Okay, so I either forgot to film an intro or I have completely misplaced it. So I had to just create one with what I had. Hopefully you were able to tell between my before pics and my after pics because I know they are so super close. I'm not even really sure why I even wear makeup. You know what I'm saying? This is the foundation I used in my most recent first impression video. I'll link that video on the screen as well as in the description box below. This is Urban Decay's Naked Weightless Concealer and I like to use just the tiniest little amount under my eyes and then blend it out with my Real Technique sponge. I like to use concealer as my eye primer, so I pull it up onto my lid with my sponge, and I always use dabbing motions when I'm using my sponge. That gives you the most flawless application. Using that same concealer, I highlight the high points of my face. So I like to do the center of my forehead, the bridge of my nose, my cupid's bow, chin, next to my nose, and under the contours of my cheeks. This whole process of using a concealer one to two shades lighter than your skin really brightens the center region of your face. It makes you look well rested even when you're not, and it adds dimension, keeping your face from flattening out too much, especially when you're using a medium to full coverage foundation. This Cody Airspun Translucent Powder is my current obsession right now. It is so light. Awesome. I always tap out any settling or creasing that has made its way into my foundation and concealer just before setting it down with powder. This step is really, really important. So as you can see, my right eye appears more flawless. This is because imperfections are brought forward when light hits it, creating a shadow. This includes under eye bags. So by concealing, then tapping it out, and then setting it down with a translucent powder, you're controlling the light disbursement, minimizing the appearance of any lines or eye bags. I go one section at a time, cleaning it up, and then setting it down. Just really pay attention to anywhere you tend to crease throughout the day. For me, these areas are eyes, forehead, and smile lines. If you bake, now's the time. I'll be filming a video on baking for mature skin very soon, so no worries. You keep smiling, and I will show you how to hide the evidence. I got you. So tap it out, set it down. Tap it out, set it down. Just do one section at a time. Tap it out, set it down. Once I'm done with all of my problem areas, I like to go in with powder to set the rest of my face. But just a little, gotta keep it light. I don't wanna go overboard or anything. <laughs> To contour, I'm using Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer in medium dark. I need to use a lighter one, but this was a free sample, so I'm trying to use this one before spending money for a new one. But that chocolate though, can we talk about it? Oh, it smells so good. And I'm using the Dallium Tools 942 brush. When contouring, the goal here is to create shading. I cut out my cheekbones to add definition. It can also have a slimming effect when you do it right. So you really want the bronzer to be the darkest at the bottom and then fade up. So I lay it down and then brush up giving that faded effect. Using it down either side of your nose helps slim your nose. If you shade the tip of your nose, it can appear shorter. Placing it across your jawline separates your face from your neck, which also has a slimming effect. And under your bottom lip, 
gives the appearance of a pouty lip. And then placing it on the temples and hairlines slims the face and also keeps it from looking flat. I use my sponge just to make sure that it is more blended in. I really want it to look as natural as possible even though it looks kind of chunky here on camera. Next, I'm going in with Milani's Baked Blush in Luminoso. This is really pretty. I like to place it on the apples of my cheeks and then pull it up and back. I really like to make sure that it goes between the bronzer and the highlighter and then I just dab rather than drag because I don't want to cause anything to slide around underneath. And adding more powder, again just to help everything look more natural and apparently I felt like I didn't use enough earlier. With the Sigma F35 brush, I'm using Becca's Moonstone Highlighter. I put it on top of my cheekbones, and if you have maturing skin, be careful to avoid highlighting any areas that you don't want to, well I guess, highlight. It's the best term. I'm careful around my eyes and forehead, and I I'm really careful to stick just to my cupid's bow. I'm just being really careful to avoid any areas I don't want to cause to stand out. And then I set it down so it won't move. And let's get real. I don't want to lose any of the magic. This is Ofra's Blush Stripes in Illuminating. And I used the white stripe as a more intense highlight over top of the Becca highlighter. I switched to a smaller brush and then I put it on the highest points of my cheekbones, the tip of my nose, and my cupid's bow. One highlighter would be absolutely fine for this look. I'm just high maintenance like that and clearly I wanted to be seen for Mars. I mean, priorities people, you know? <laughs> For my brows, I'm using Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in Taupe, like always, and I'm just going to speed through this. Brows take a minute to learn, and I'm doing them differently now, right now anyways, always changing up my routine, so I'll do a video on my brows later. <laughs> For my eyes, I'm going to start off with Makeup Geek's Peach Smoothie for my transition shade. And I like to start off with a big fluffy brush. This one is an E40 from Sigma. I'm laying this color down just above my actual crease since I have hooded eyes. And then I just make sure to blend it out really, really well. Now with Makeup Geek's Beaches and Cream, I'm just going to use the same brush, just bringing it down just a little bit lower than Peach Smoothie, and then making sure that I blend it out as well as the last shade. Let me know in the comments if you would be interested in a video specifically for eyeshadow for hooded eyes. Now going in with Makeup Geek's Creme Brulee, I'm using a tapered blending brush that's a little smaller than the E40 and then I place it in the crease just a little bit lower than the last color and I'm bringing all of these crease shades from the outer corner all the way to the inner corner and then I blend it out and then switch back to the E40 and blend some more. This is Makeup Geek's Bitten eyeshadow. So using an even smaller tapered blending brush, I'm just placing the shadow into the outer crease area and carving out that outer V. And then I will switch to the previous brush to start blending it out. I blend it out with the bigger brush and then I add a little more color with the smaller brush. Blend with the larger, add with the smaller, and then I just repeat this process until the color and depth are right where I want it. Just making sure to really blend it out. With a flat shader brush, 
and Max Fix Plus. I'm just going to wet in the brush with the Fix Plus and then pick up Makeup Geek's Shima Shima eyeshadow. And I'm going to place it all over my mobile lid from my lash line to my crease. I'll do a video, like I said earlier, devoted to hooded eyes to go into more detail. But for right now, I am going to be creating a sort of dome shape and just packing that shadow on. I'm really working to avoid any dragging movements so that I don't move any product around. This type of brush is best used to pat. Once I'm finished loading on that shadow, I'll go back in with the previous brush and without adding any product, I'll just use it to carefully blend out the line in the crease. And this is gonna create a sort of soft cut crease. And if you need to, you can go between packing on the shimmer shimmer and then blending out the crease until you have your desired intensity. Using a small liner brush and Makeup Geek's Corrupt Eyeshadow, it's just a black eyeshadow, I'm smoking out my lash line and this really darkens the lash line without being as intense as eyeliner and I want this look to be really soft. I didn't wear any this day, but if you are putting on falsies, make sure that you tight line by adding some black liner under your upper lash line to keep any skin tone from showing through. For my lower lash line, I go in the opposite order that I went for my lid. So starting with Makeup Geek's Bitten eyeshadow and the BH Cosmetics version of the Sigma E15 Flat Definer brush, I'm just going to smudge it right into my lash line and I'm going to keep it really tight. I'm using Beaches and Cream and a pencil brush, the one that I use here is Sigma's E30, to smoke that darker color out because I do not want there to be any line of eyeshadow. So I'm going to be smoking it out from the outer corner to the inner corner. Then, using a tiny little detailer brush and Makeup Geek's Ice Queen, I'm going to highlight my inner corners as well as my brow bone, but just at the highest point because this eyeshadow is intense. I went in with just a clean brush just to make sure everything was blended and there were no lines. I curled my lashes and now I'm going in with Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara on my top and my bottom lashes. This is Urban Decay's 24-7 Velvet Eye Pencil in the color Plushy, which is a beautiful purple shade. It goes in my waterline. I really love how purple looks with light eyes. However, feel free to use white, cream, or nude liner. Any of those would look beautiful with this look. I am lining my lips with ColourPop's Lippy Pencil in the color Skimpy and bringing it in just a little bit. with Dose of Colors Stone Liquid Lipstick. I really love how this is just slightly more mauve or mauve, depending on how you say it, than just a regular nude shade. I'm using Max Lipstick in the color Myth just to put in the center of my lips for a slight ombre effect. Finishing up the most high maintenance nude lips in my life. This is Buxom's Lip Polish in Samantha. Now just to finish up by using a setting spray. This is Max Fix Plus and then after I spray it all over I just use my sponge to press it in. I don't like the idea of leaving little dots or whatever, I'm just high maintenance. Yeah. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to leave any feedback, questions, comments, requests, whatever down below. I love you so much and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye guys. Bye.